filming a deadlift session with my coach Mark Boy today. For you too. All right. Gonna get some good info today. How do you gauge on whether or not to keep pulling or not, or to keep to keep your athlete going, like the so, bar speed? So generally, I work on the speed of the bar. So right now, we're around the 90% mark, and this bar is moving for three seconds, so there's still plenty more in the tank. Uh, we're aiming for a 250 plus deadlift right now. As I said, 90%. The bar's moving for three seconds on the first rep, four seconds on the second. If that second rep starts to become five seconds, then we, we then cut it. Yeah, yeah, you we'll just know, it. just by the speed of the bar, how long a pull takes, yeah. that's how you gauge it. But it's important in between we rest and get sufficient rest. Absolutely. So it's not affecting the, the sets and reps going forward. So yeah, we're in a good place right now. We've got one more set. Um, Typically, like what's a general guideline on a good amount of rest to take between heavy sets of deadlift? It's all dependent on who the athlete is. Obviously, Tanner's right. recovery is a lot more efficient uh, for, from other athletes, but I would say typically five to 10 minutes between each working set when you're working around 80% plus. Obviously, below that you can add in a little bit of tempo because you're generally working speed on those. those um, but right now we're, we're trying to build Tanner's nervous system up so much so that he'll be able to pull 250 plus. So, the big thing with me is I have a tendency to train too fast. I've always done CrossFit and I came from just a strength conditioning background with football and it's like always go, go, go. But I've never reached, I feel like I've never reached my true strength potential, which is why I'm working with Mark, just so I can actually get that. And you actually have to kind of slow down if you actually want to get stronger. That's at least the way I understand. Ultimately, when you're working in peak training, or you're, you're building up to say say your peak, you'll be working at 80% capacity because you're training every other day or every day. Generally, you find the top athletes, they'll take seven to 10 days off or deloading to gain that 20% that's missing, so that 100%. So right now we're working 90%, let's say one rep max, but Tanner is, around his 80% sort of max capacity right now. So when we build up to the peak, we'll deload, bring everything back, all his other training, and then he should be 100%, which brings on an extra few kilos, that's for sure. I hope so, for sure. Just, Mark works with some of the, literally the strongest men in the world. Larry Wills, Thor. Mark's coached these guys, so that's why I chose him to be my coach, because he knows his shit. Another question while I have you. Tell me how you feel about working with bands and chains and accommodating resistance. And have you ever used that in your training? I would love to hear your opinion on that. The basics work. So you're adding resistance points and yeah, they, they, they might benefit. Um, but if you work with the basics, you're always gonna achieve results with basics. So, so one other question. Mark, you deadlift 900 pounds or very close to 900 pounds, correctly. Yeah, yeah, close. At any point in your training block or leading up to that 900 pound deadlift, did you put bands or chains on the bar? No chains, no bands, none of that riffraff. I just came in, I deadlifted, I worked on the basic principles, and yeah. Right. Mastered the basics. Fucking hell, man. Here's 
a rare shot of me sitting down during a workout. I never sit down during workouts. Like I, I don't feel like you should go into the gym to sit down. You go in there to get work done. However, when you're pulling like 90% deadlifts or heavy ass deadlifts, maximal recovery between sets is paramount. So even me, I'm gonna sit down between sets of heavy deadlifts just to make sure I'm recovered to hit my next set as best as I can. Yeah, so if you start in that position yeah. of having spinal tension, it's totally fine. Yes. If you're back and rounding on that, that deadlift with no spinal tension, that's where yeah. problems yeah. are going to occur. If you look, your rhomboids are so thick and dense. Like, yeah, I feel like my, 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 my back always looks like it's rounding in a way. It's not, it's but not. It's not, because I, I assure you, I have spinal tension when I'm pulling these deadlifts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that, that's the main thing. As long as you feel you have spinal tension, Absolutely. That, and it's conditioned, your back is conditioned to do it. Yeah, exactly. And so, so it's nothing to worry about. And then when you see people, when you people say, oh man, look how much he's rounding his back. No. These people just don't know what they're talking about and haven't really pulled any heavy deadlifts. No. And, and the thing is as well, you've, it's been a linear progression. So if you brought someone in from the general population and brought them in and told them to one rep max and they're working with that technique, their back's not conditioned to that. So that's where these, myths come out that oh you're back rounded yeah but there's other factors as well are you conditioned have you built up a linear peak absolutely Thirteen, fourteen weeks ago, I first came to Mark, and one of my first questions was because I was kind of anti-belt. I was like, Mark, should I wear a belt or should I not wear a belt? And he looked like at, he looked at me like I was a dumbass. He's like, always wear a belt, always. Yeah, the, look, just the importance of wearing the belt is obviously it provides support, and a lot of people say yeah, it's cheating, it's helping, but it's actually teaching you and enabling you to properly brace. So you've got that resistance there that you're abdomen is pushing again so when it comes to using no belt it actually benefits because the resistance isn't there and um, obviously you need to build that back up you can't just take the belt off and lift the same weight but the, the bracing uh, is more efficient super important just doing these deadlifts right now 275 it's not heavy but i'm focusing on bracing as hard as i can it's like extremely taxing and fatiguing to my abdominal muscles my, my core muscles all of the principles are the same here. Here, here, here. and that's why you see a lot of the strong the strongest athletes in the world because they have such thick core muscles and a lot of people think oh it's fat you go out and touch like, yeah that's that's a muscle yeah and all this keep your waist tight and slim it's uh, it's not for strength it's, Never train for aesthetics. All right, last set. Mark, on average, the best strongman in the world, how many exercises would they do per workout? Three or four, uh, three or four max. The aim isn't to do more. Uh, it's to do the basics, to do them efficiently, and not, not empty the tank, basically. And you said earlier, quote, Mark, more is never better, or? Maybe rest is best. Rest is best. Rest is best, but more training is never better. Uh, that's some things that the top guys do is they, they actually pull back on their training. Uh, obviously they're working hard day in, day out, but it's not all about emptying the tank. So more is not always better. So that's a fairly typical session with my coach, Mark Boyd. My goal is to get a 250 to 275 kg deadlift and I feel like I'm well on my way. I'll document it as I go and big thanks to Mark for his time, his expertise. 
and Problem. his willingness to work with me. So, I'm very Problem. fortunate. Next week, 250. It's going yeah, down. Hopefully. Not.